few weeks ago, I posted a video called what I learned by getting rid of 60% of my clothes. A lot of you guys requested a part two to that video. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you 10 more things I learned by decluttering 60% of my clothes. those of you who don't know me, welcome. My name's Christina. I talk about minimalism, intentional living, and how to get the most out of what you've already got. I used to be a full-blown shopaholic and in $120,000 of student loan debt. And it was actually through minimalism and decluttering that I was able to get out of that debt a little faster and get a better handle on my shopping habits. Decluttering my closet was truly instrumental in helping me achieve that goal. The more time I spent with my stuff and the more I got rid of what no longer served me, what what I was holding on to, the more I was able to get to know myself and even find and define my personal style. So if you guys wanna see part one, I will leave it linked up here for you. And I learned a whole lot more than what I talked about in that video. So let's get into what I learned by decluttering 60% of my closet. Part two. Number one is that I decided that I don't want a 30 piece wardrobe. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Yes, I value minimalism and I use it as a tool to make sure the things that I bring into my life are serving me with some kind of joy or value. And I know every minimalist will tell you how much happier they are with less, but the one thing I find that's lacking when people talk about less is no one tells you a number. Whatever less means is gonna be completely personal to you and how you choose to define it. For me, my closet used to look like this. When I started decluttering, I had over 350 pieces of clothing. And over the past two to three years, I've decluttered two thirds of that pile. And now I feel really happy and comfortable with around 100 pieces of clothing. And I know a lot of you guys will probably freak out at that number and be like, that's way too many. How dare you call yourself a minimalist? Raider, how dare you betray the planet I got laid on? I've heard it all, no big deal. But this number of pieces is what feels good to me. I found when I was really focusing on decluttering down to a 30 piece wardrobe to that sort of Pinterest definition of what a minimalist wardrobe should be, I was miserable. Truth be told, by that point, I was decluttering my wardrobe for all the wrong reasons, and I wasn't decluttering to create space for myself and make myself feel better. If anything, it was becoming more stressful and more punishing because I thought I needed to declutter my way down to 30 items or less. As soon as I let that go and just decided, I don't want a 30 piece wardrobe and accepted that reality for myself guilt-free, I felt so much better. I felt so much better about my wardrobe, so much better about my style, and so much better about letting go of things in the future because I'm not letting constraints and certain rules define how much I should and should not have in my wardrobe. Less is a relative term and it takes time, like years, I would say, to simplify your way into a wardrobe that feels good and abundant and joyful to you. When it comes to a size of a wardrobe, do you is a good motto to go by. The second thing I learned is that nobody cares what you wear, but if you care, that's totally valid. I think it's important to care about the way we look, but where I think I got things wrong for a long time in my wardrobe and in my shopping is that I was shopping and dressing to impress others. I wanted someone to look at my shoes when I pass them by on the street and think to themselves, wow, that girl's got her shit together, or wow, those are expensive shoes. She probably has a really good job. And for a long time, that was my pure motivation in getting dressed. I never really thought about what made me feel my best, what I felt good in. And sometimes it would have just been a white t-shirt and jeans, but I was so focused on looking current, looking trendy, having the latest launches, so that people around me would perceive me in a certain way. I realized over time as I decluttered my closet and really found what I felt good and comfortable in is that I like getting dressed. I like clothes, I like planning outfits, and I even like thinking about things that I wanna add to my current wardrobe and planning for ways to keep those items in my wardrobe for a long time. So really nobody gives a shit about what you look like, but if you do, it's perfectly valid to want to put effort into that and to care about it. 
I used to be in the camp of I'm gonna have the same 10 white t-shirts and one pair of jeans and call it good, but when I tried doing that, I was really unhappy and I felt really stagnant and restrained. And it was from that extreme side of decluttering that I was able to realize that, no, I actually like getting dressed. I like mixing and matching my clothes. I like building outfits. I like doing all of that stuff. And I think that's a much healthier perspective and motivation to be coming from when you are getting dressed. Don't dress to impress others, dress to impress yourself. The third thing I learned is that you lose more than money when you refuse to let go. What I learned over these past two and a half years of minimalism is that things cost a lot more than just money. They can cost you time when you're searching and shopping for it or when you're agonizing over whether or not you should or shouldn't let it go. I found when I was really overanalyzing and struggling with letting things go through my declutters, a lot of times I was really just focused on the money that I paid for the thing because I did have a penchant for expensive luxury items, which made letting go of those things really difficult for me. But over time, I started to realize I'm spending all this time and energy trying to declutter the thing, agonizing over the thing, feeling guilty that I bought the thing. I realized even though that money was long gone and that's the thing that I thought I was focusing on more, I was wasting so much more time and energy going through the process of deciding of whether or not I wanted to let it go in the first place. And if a thing is causing you that much stress and agony when you are decluttering it, chances are it's probably a good idea to let it go. When I declutter now, I really try to stick to a hell yes versus a hell no mentality. If I don't get that hell yes feeling, then usually it does mean it's a no. And if it does feel maybe I don't want to spend too much time agonizing over it, I'll either try to style it that week or I will store it away and revisit it at another time. Either way, it's still a quick decision. I'd rather not give that thing more of my time and my energy than it's already taken from me. The fourth thing I learned is that just in case, is a form of holding on. Now, sometimes there are legit just-in-case scenarios, but every item in your wardrobe can't be for just-in-case. So if you notice that a lot of these pieces are kind of ending up in a just-in-case scenario, then it could mean that you're just not ready to let go of it yet, which by the way is totally okay. If you're really struggling with something or you're just not sure, it's perfectly fine to set it aside and revisit it later, store it away and check back in like three months. But I usually found for me, a lot of the times the just in case scenario just never really ever happened. Most of us are pretty adaptable. We'll make do with what we've got. And when you're limited by certain constraints, that's when you can really get creative with your wardrobe. The fifth thing I learned is that simple is not always the same as minimal. To be honest, the more I sort of learn about minimalism and intentional living, and it's that the word less, the word simplify, the word intentional, it's all how you interpret it and how you implement it into your life. For me, because I had a 350 plus piece wardrobe and a hundred item wardrobe actually feels quite simple to me. But by many visual definitions, it probably isn't that minimal. But where I have simplified in my wardrobe is that I found my style uniform. All of my pieces are really easy to mix and match. Every single day I just grab and go and I know I feel good. And that to me is simple. I'm not agonizing over my wardrobe anymore. I'm not stressed out when I open my closet. It feels fun, it feels abundant, and it feels like me. And the funny thing is when I stop trying to minimize it so much and get down to that certain number of pieces, the more at ease and happy and abundant I felt in my wardrobe. So simple doesn't always necessarily have to mean minimal. Number seven is that the perfect wardrobe is the one that you're using. I spent so much time, energy, and money trying to buy my perfect wardrobe for years. But how many of us have bought certain things thinking it was the perfect item and then it just ends up sitting in the back of our closets with the tag still on, never to be thought of again? Yeah, same. The perfect wardrobe is the one that you're using and that you're wearing. The one key thing that I noticed was that the more time I spent in my actual wardrobe getting dressed, decluttering, putting laundry away, the more I realized I had and the more inspired and the more fun I had with my wardrobe. If you are looking to shop less and save more money, truly the number one thing I can recommend that you do is to go to your closet and play some dress up. I'll see if I can find something silly to dress up in here. 
Spend some actual time with your clothes. Sometimes you're even reminded of how much you have and it can actually be overwhelming, but either way, it's a good reminder to get use out of what you already have. The disconnect I always felt when I was shopping all the time was that I would justify the purchase to myself saying that, oh, I can wear it here and I can wear it this number of ways and I'll wear it to this amazing event and it'll be just like the perfect addition to my wardrobe. Most of the time, those clothes never ended up being worn the way I told myself that I would. The more time I spent with my wardrobe, the more use I was getting out of my clothes and the more comfortable I was starting to feel within them using your stuff. Who knew? Number eight is that it's great to be inspired, but don't copy. A lot of what used to drive my shopping was influencers. For years, I was just straight up not creative when it came to my personal style. I loved using influencers and celebrities as inspiration, AKA I would search for the exact thing that they were wearing, buy it, feel guilty about it, probably never wear it, all with the idea of, oh, I'm gonna look like her. And not only is that miserable, but it is very expensive. This is why I talk so much about shopping your closet and using things like Pinterest, TikTok, Instagram as inspiration and not aspiration. Looking back at myself, I think I was really just lacking that creativity and not viewing all these things as inspiration. This is why I also feel like things like hauls are kind of uncreative content because I wanna see how you style these things. I wanna see how you put your own spin on it because even if I copied the exact same outfit as somebody else, it's still gonna look and feel different on me because I have a different body, I have a different proportion, I will carry myself in a different way depending on what the clothing is and if I feel comfortable in it or not. And it's never as easy as just copying that exact outfit or taking that exact piece and injecting it into your life. Now, sometimes you are gonna want that exact piece. Maybe it's something that you've seen over and over again and you decide, hey, that's really cool. I would really like to incorporate that into my style. I think that's totally cool. But for me, for the longest time, I was just straight up copying and really missing a lot of opportunities to get creative with the clothes that I already had. Number nine is that it's important to spend more time in your actual wardrobe than the time you spend shopping. Even though I have been shopping this year and I've added things to my wardrobe, Robe and I'm feeling a lot more comfortable from, especially from a financial perspective when it comes to shopping. The one thing I do sort of see with shopping is that it really focuses on what's missing, which is not a bad thing, like I said. I think it's important to allow our styles to be fluid and evolve and to add things in when you want to or replace things, whatever. But when I am shopping for something new, the majority of the time, I'm not thinking about what I've already got and what I'm not wearing enough right now because shopping is fun, it feels productive, it's always exciting to bring in something new but either way I still think it's important to make sure that we're spending time with our actual clothes before we decide to add something new and even just to remind ourselves of how that new thing can be incorporated into the wardrobe we have right now. For a long time, those were two thoughts that just never meshed up, never met. It was never from a perspective of how can this thing work with my wardrobe already? How is it going to stay in my wardrobe for a long time? It was always, my wardrobe's not perfect, so I'm gonna spend my time curating that perfect wardrobe by buying things. And number 10 is that going broke for my wardrobe was not worth it. I like clothes, I like feeling stylish, I like buying new things, but I like knowing that I'm taking care of my future self first now. For years, I got it completely backwards and it's taken a long time to turn around and reverse that course. Clothes, style, getting dressed, all of that is a joy and I love it. I love it for me and I love it for you, but it is not worth going broke for ever, just saying. So those are 10 more things that I learned by getting rid of 60% of my clothes. If you've been doing some decluttering of your own, I would love to know in the comments things that you've learned about yourself, about your personal style, about your shopping. If you like this video, it would really help me out if you gave it a little thumbs up. It's a great way to help my videos reach other people and I'm trying to get to 100K, you guys. We're almost there. Can we do it? Can we? And if you haven't already, please subscribe. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.